Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to set up the data science and big data analytics course lab. So first of all, we'll talk about the minimum system requirements. Um, if I talk about for the server, it would be a client server uh, scenario and on the server we would require a minimum of 8 GB RAM, recommended as 16 GB for the intensive uh, uh, analytics to be done, but a minimum of 8 GB without which it would not work, and approximately 100 GB of free hard drive space on the server. And on the client system can be of any minimum configuration. Um, on the server, we would require these three softwares. So one is your VMware player uh, that can be downloaded from VMware.com. And uh, the three rest of the three softwares that needs to be installed on the client system on your uh, the 20 desktops or servers, uh, 20 desktops or laptop systems uh, that are in network with the server. Uh, one is Putty. Uh, it can be downloaded from putty.org. Uh, WinSCP and GP admin. These three, uh, to get this file, the data science and uh, lab set of file, as well as the virtual machine template with which we will uh, work on it, you can need to get in touch with our uh, EMC Academic Alliance, with your EMC Academic Alliance program officer or account manager. Uh, or you can simply uh, go to education.emc uh, slash academic alliance and you can click on contact us. It will open up the uh, the, you can write to us at academic underscore alliance underscore program office at emc.com. I'll repeat the email. It's academic underscore alliance underscore program underscore office at emc.com. Uh, you can download the, we'll, to begin with, we'll need to download um, uh, the VMware player that can be downloaded from uh, vmware.com. The link is provided in the setup file itself, vmware.com. Uh, it's a freeware again. Go under the download sections. It says free product downloads. The last product is via VMware Player. And uh, once the download is complete, you can set it up as a, any uh, any file uh, and uh, just choose the default settings, default configurations, and set it up. Uh, once your virtual machine VMware Player is downloaded, uh, you need to uh, click on Open a Virtual Machine. So here we will provide a path to our uh, the virtual machine template that you would have got from your uh, program officer or EMC Academic Alliance program officer. So this is how the template would look like. Uh, it would consist of a folder, pod1be. Uh, Under that folder, there would be approximately six files, approximately of 20 GB, uh, all of these six files. And uh, what we'll do is, we'll, when we open a virtual machine, we'll provide or set the path to that pod1be uh, virtual machine and only one file, that's OVF file, that we'll, uh, we will be able to see. We'll select the file and click on open. I can change here the name. I can put in any name as uh, data science lab or uh, big data lab. Uh, that name would be for my reference on the library. If you see on the left, uh, left hand side, uh, there is a library which have uh, several virtual machines. So this name has just reference from the from this particular virtual machine. Plus, this would be the path where we would be requiring those 100 GB of space. So I'll just if right now I'm providing it on my. I'm just this is the path where your virtual machine would be stored, and you can simply click on import. Uh, once you uh, start import, it will take approximately half an hour to 45 minutes to for the entire import to get complete. And uh, it will come up uh, over here, something like this. I have already imported it by the name of Data Science and Big Data Analytic Lab. So it would come up over here. And as it says, the minimum RAM that would require is 8 GB, without, it, without which it would not function. Uh, you just need to simply click on Play Virtual Machine to start it up for the first time. Uh, Allow it to boot. We're just waiting for it to boot up. Uh, 
So in the meanwhile, I'll, I'll just let you know that you need to download these three uh, files. Uh, Putty is a normal um, SSH or Telenet client that will allow us to uh, access our server or this virtual machine template uh, from our uh, from our uh, client systems. WinSCP is again uh, will allow us to. It's more of a file data sharing transfer or FTP file transfer. Uh, uh, that we'll be using to transfer any files from our server uh, to our desktops or uh, to our desktop systems. And GP admin is for PostgreSQL um, client SSH uh, that needs to be transferred from uh, or run the PostgreSQL client um, configurations from one place to uh, from our desktops to our server. Now our server consists of uh, already has been this virtual machine template uh, that we have just installing. It already consists of uh, Greenplum uh, Hadoop database, Pivotal Greenplum database, uh, which is based on Hadoop uh, and MapReduce functionality. Uh, it is also consisting of uh, R Studio server uh, and PostgreSQL. That's uh, uh, that's a min uh, that's a free uh, SQL uh, software that has been installed on this uh, virtual machine template. So this comes with a pre-installed configuration with Pivotal Greenplum and plus all the databases that are required to do the lab. So your uh, the training database and whatever databases are required uh, and the data sets that are required to do the lab, they're already pre-installed in this one. So um, we'll just allow it to uh, boot up. Okay, uh, the password, uh, the username uh, for root would be, uh, username is root and the password is gpsne root for the same. Uh, we'll log in with that. Okay, now once we are here, we just need to write a simple command that's called kudzu. What it does is it will duplicate the settings of your uh, virtual machine, the network settings of your uh, server that you have installed on the hardware settings. Since it's a template and all the network statistic settings or network uh, settings were uh, pre-installed or pre-configured as per the previous uh, uh, server that on which it was installed. So, um, We'll uh, just set it up uh, right now. Uh, once we write kudzu, it will automatically pick up the command. Um, and it will nothing happen. It will uh, take you back to the same uh, command prompt root at uh, whatever file name is there. I'm not try writing it because I've already done it. So once I've write kudzu, uh, the next command that I'll write is startx. This will basically give me uh, access to my uh, GUI uh, uh, the graphical user interface rather than the command prompt of the CentOS operating system that is being installed on it. So once you're on the Kudzu, you can simply, uh, once you're on the, the CentOS uh, system, you could need to go under systems, go under administrations, uh, click on network, and and a network, uh, since we have wrote in the kudzu command, they would see two uh, it's zeros, Ethernet zero cards. Um, and you can simply double click on the H zero normal one, not the H zero dot back. That's a backup card. So on H zero, where you can choose either a static IP address, you can provide the static IP address over here, or you can click on uh, the DHCP, which we'll do right now. The OK button would be on the right. Um, and you can change your DNS settings. I have put my host name as my name over here, whatever uh, DNS that you want to put in there. And since uh, it would show inactive, once you have done that, you can click on activate it. Allow it to activate for some time. If it is a static IP address that you would have provided, it would have taken, uh, uh, it would have activated right away. So at, the, as, at this point of time, it is just, uh, since it is dynamic, uh, it is determining the IP information.
So once it is activated, as it shows right now, uh, active, uh, we'll just close it up and restart uh, the virtual machine. So this virtual machine acts exactly the same uh, as any physical server. All it is just that the only difference is we are working it out on a uh, in a virtual environment. Just restart it. So just a piece of advice, uh, whenever we are installing any of these softwares like VMware Player or Putty or WinSCP or GP Admin, just uh, keep on choosing the default um, settings for all of them. And uh, as I can see, now my system is up and running, uh, my virtual machine server that was there, um, that is up and running. So I can simply use putty to get access to that. I'll just type in the host name and see if it is accessible from that. Okay, I would have to put in my IP address. Whatever, this is the same IP address of the server that I've just, and we just configured the H0. Uh, at that point in time, either we are statistic, uh, statically, uh, we are providing it a static IP address, or we are providing a, a normal address. So, um, it will give you the host key is not uh, cache res uh, registry. You can simply click on yes on it. Uh, log in as, either I can log in as uh, GP admin. And... I can, uh, the password will be again provided to you with the lab. And I can perform here any of this uh, lab exercise one if I want to pro uh, perform, I can perform it here. So this is the lab guide, I can perform my uh, I can simply perform, start performing from my first lab itself. The lab guide is again provided from your faculty lounge. You can get access to that from there. So as soon as I'm here, I can start from my 1.2, that is GP state. And all of the students, this, uh, this thing has installed on all of the students. Uh, uh, desktop, so all of them can do it simultaneously. Uh, if you want to, uh, to, once we are here, if you want to, let's see, uh, we'll just see a use of WinSCP and GP Admin as well. I'm coming back to my the VMware player, the virtual machine. I'll, in, I'll create a few of the users for lab exercises, like uh, for our studio, we would require uh, more than one users to have it access to it uh, at one single point of time. So to set up more users, so let's say if I have a students of, uh, if I have a lab of 20 students, I can access it. Um, if I have a lab of 20 students, I would need to create 20 users on my, uh, this virtual machine itself. So how to create a user, I'll just let you know and what all things need to be uh, kept in mind while creating a user. You need to again go to system. At the top, uh, go to system. And go to administration. Okay, go to system, go to administration, and go to the option called user and groups. Another option, uh, I, you just need to go to add users. Just choose any of the, like user three, for example, password, you can put in anything, because you're setting it up. 
Again, password, you can put in as password or anything else. Once you click on that, the user 3 would be created. And do a double click on that. You just need to do a double click on that. Click on groups. Add three uh, or five groups rather to it. One is admin, ADM. One is Hadoop and GP admin. These two groups needs to be added. And uh, RStudio server. Yeah. RStudio server. So these are the four groups that needs to be added for each of the users. So once you add the users, we need to again restart it to get it into effect. And uh, this is how, uh, once we are there, we'll need to use WinSCP to transfer the data set. So I'll just show you, like we've just created Win uh, user 3. I'll just, to access my RStudio lab, we need to go to, I just need to type in the same IP address of my virtual machine server. Now this is the one again, I'm still, uh, that's the one that is being set up. After the IP or the host name, you just need to type in 8787. That's the port number for my RStudio server on my virtual machine. And I'll sign in with the user that has been created, like user uh, 3 I'll choose right now that has been created recently. I'll type in the password. When I sign in, it will show me a blank screen on the right hand side, top right, bottom right hand side but it will not have any of the lab material. Okay, so you see it's a blank over here. So what we need to do is we need to go to WinSCP. Again, type my the host name. We'll log in with the user GP admin. Password would be provided to you by the in the lab guide or in the with your academicus officer. So this is how the WinSCP will open up. So these are my system files on my system, and these this is the the GP admin home uh, or the system uh, lab files that are there. So these are the, all the files that would be required to uh, do the lab exercises for the data science uh, uh, exercises for the data science lab. It all contains the data, the R script as well, and all the data. So we'll just click on do select all these lab one to lab twelve. We'll select those. We'll select the final lab. We'll do a right click and we'll click on duplicate. Do not click on move, otherwise it will be uh, moved from there. And just choose, after home, just choose whatever user we have created. We have just created user three. So we'll choose user three and we'll click on okay. It will say that it will need to open up another session. certain files that are, that are not copying, but normally it should not give this error. If we just hit a refresh over here, we'll go to user three, see if, okay. Normally it would not give an error, it would come up something. Uh, we'll just, okay, we'll just log in through root on here. Let me just log it out. Rather than GP admin, we'll log in through root to get all the desired permissions. Okay, we'll go back one step. We'll go to home. We'll go to GP admin. We'll select these lab X, all lab one to lab 12, and the final lab. Do a right click, duplicate. To user three. Now they're moving. You can see under 
user three, all these final labs are there. And similarly, if you can see under uh, on your R uh, Studio profile as well, all these lab exercises would come up. So the students can simply uh, do the lab exercises from here itself. Uh, for uh, this is during the R Studio lab exercises for data science and big data analytics. So if you still face any issues regarding the regarding how to set it up and how to use uh, the data science and big data analytics lab. Please feel free to write to us at, uh, uh, I mean, uh, navjo.sing at emc.com, and we'll be glad to answer all your queries. Thank you. Thanks for your tutorial. Thanks for your time.